Hello, sir. I am Nandita, and I would like to seek your advice on a situation. Uh, actually, uh, in in my school days, I had a friend whom I considered as my best friend, and I trusted her the most. But she suddenly backstabbed me, which really made my trust broken. And now, uh, when I make friends. I can't make friends like I used to do before. I can't trust them much of how I used to do. So, how do I deal with this? You are doing the right thing. If you trust the next one in the same way as you trusted the previous one, then the new relationship will meet the same fate as the previous one. So, trusting in itself is not a problem. The problem. is the way you trust the center you trust from obviously you made a mistake in the past by your own admission that mistake ought not be repeated and if you remain the same person and operate from the same value system the same point then you will repeat the same mistake which means your definition of trust has to be revised trust is a great thing right but belief in the name of trust superstition in the name of trust lack of enquiry in the name of trust hmm blind attraction in the name of trust these are not good things how do you know somebody is trustworthy how do you know whether or not to trust someone when uh, when i when i say something to the people or when i feel someone is my best friend or when i feel she is so good to me and if i share something which i feel like okay i can share this with her if she keeps it with her other than um, rumoring it then i feel they are trustworthy where you are that's a definition you want to start with Hmm? think of most of the things you privately share with your friends what is the worth of those things i am asking you at your age in your situation what is it that you generally privately share with your friends and expect it to be kept a secret what are the kind of things great things of the world the next lunar mission how man is going to colonize the next galaxy is this what you whisper in your friends ear hmm how india is going to solve its impending water crisis how to ensure bangalore is not flooded again the next year is that what two girls sit next to each other and whisper in their ears about is that what you are concerned with Hmm? how to ensure china withdraws from the positions it has occupied in ladakh and the two ladies are deeply concerned these are not two friends talking it's an international summit are these the matters that you want to keep secret among the two of you are these the matters then what are the matters what are the matters that you take so seriously what is it that goes on usually between two teenage people what is the level of dialogue what is the content of the interaction how do you rate it when it comes to real importance in life on a scale of 1 to 100 how important are the things huh that you so passionately share with your friends what is their real level of importance please tell me on a scale of 1 to 100 1 is least important 100 is most and you can choose to go below one you could say minus 20 minus 4000 even that is permissible what are all those whispers about deep philosophical matters why did god make the earth 
Yes? Why did the dinosaurs go extinct? Hmm? And having had the discussion, you tell the other, please delete all my messages and all the pics. Because those pics belong to all the extinct dinosaurs, you know. What if somebody has a look? Is that what you discuss privately? Please tell me. What is the worth of all those things? I asked you to rate, please, somebody. On 1 to 100, what is the worth of those things? So, between friends, we normally discuss about a personal situation. Like if what I'm is the free, worth of those things? Please tell me. 1 to 100, maybe 30. What is the real worth of those things? You know what is important today in life, right? And we all have dealt in those whispers. We know the content of those whispers. What is the worth of those whispers? Please tell me. And the things that you plead to be kept secret. What is the worth of those things in the first place? No, no, please don't tell somebody. Huh? What don't tell somebody? What is there not to be told? What great things? Nobody wants to utter a number. Huh? It would hurt. 1 to 100, please utter a number. What is the worth of those things that you... Ah, a semi-honest answer at least. Why not say minus 100? Sir, it's not even worth the number in it. He's saying the number system will fail to capture the importance. So, somebody has chosen to participate in that negative discussion, correct? If a negative value is to be assigned to the, con to the content of our whispers, you have finally found someone who is prepared to participate in that valueless discussion. Somebody, you, you wanted to share something that has absolutely no value. And you managed to get hold of someone who agreed to listen to something that has absolutely no value. Now tell me, what kind of person would that be? I want to throw all my junk on somebody's face. And somebody agrees to have all the junk thrown at her face. What kind of person would that be? That person herself would have value less than zero. Why would any good person, why would any sensible person, first of all, agree to participate in the whispers? Are you getting me? Why would any sensible person agree to participate in the secret business? The sensible person would say, come on, there are far more important things in life. I don't want to be a part of this. So you will necessarily have to choose a worthless person for the worthless kind of whispering. Correct? No sensible person will agree to be your friend if that's the dealing you want to have with her. The sensible person will say, have some, something sensible to deal in. What is all this, you know, dirty linen being washed, not in public, then in private? Now, having chosen a worthless person, why regret that that worthless person went out and exposed all my secrets? Because that's what worthless people are anyway supposed to do. If you trust someone who is of no value, what is that valueless person going to do with your trust? Come on, tell me. I trust this huh? to be my sword. The thing is, it has no strength. But I trusted it. And I tried to use it as my sword. And then I say, this ditched me. This deceived me. Does the problem lie in this? or in the criteria of my trust? Does the problem lie with this or in my trust? Why are you trusting somebody so unworthy? But the thing is, as we have been saying for a period now, for an unworthy act, 
you will definitely be compulsorily be forced to choose an unworthy person. So the act is unworthy, hence the partner is unworthy and because the partner is unworthy, he will deceive you and when you are deceived, you cry. No, what do we do with this? This cannot act as a sword, but this can be used to wipe your tears. So please. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Manisha. So my question is, when we are being judged by the people around us, sometimes we feel sad and depressed due to the judgments. So how to overcome this? When you are being judged by the? People around us. So sometimes we feel sad and depressed. No, it is all right to consider what people around you are saying about you. But first of all, the people around you must be the right people. Right? How can you just listen to anybody? If you have people around you who cannot listen to the truth, why will you listen to those people? How have you cultivated the idea that you are obliged to listen to just about anybody. The person you are saying you are listening to is that person first of all listening to the truth or is that person listening to his her own fantasies, imaginations, all kinds of distractions and nonsense. You do not exist to just be enslaved by your surroundings, your environment and all and sundry. You are entitled to a free existence. Hmm? Be extremely cautious of who is around you. If you have the right people around you, there is nothing wrong in listening. In fact, if you have the right people around you, it is your responsibility towards yourself to listen. But the first thing is to check who are the people that surround you. And be cautious. All right. Thank you, sir. So the thing is, uh, we have already decided to go on a, a path of whatever we want to achieve. And I'm sure of it that, okay, I like this. I'm interested in it. And suddenly, due to some of the other reasons, I feel, am I on the right path? Uh, I'm unsure of what I have decided. So how to be, un uh, how to be sure of what we are Test doing? Test it. There is no other way. See, life is a different thing for each of us. Hmm? Life, as I see it, as I experiment it, where I stand and the path I might, I'm taking will never be the same as the path you are taking or somebody else is taking or somebody in the past has taken. How then do you know whether your path is the right one for you? You'll have to apply all your intelligence. The intention must be to inquire, test, experiment, not just have blind belief. Hmm? Something appears right. Why be too eager to just accept it as right? If the thing is indeed right, it will prove itself to be right, right? So wait for it to prove itself. And how will the proof come? How will the proof come? Experiencing it. In maths, when are you allowed to write hence proved? Solving it. And without solving it, if just below the question you write hence proved, hmm, what do you get? Zero. <laughs> so hence proved are two very nice words to read, but only after doing the requisite hard work. 
we are not that honest always in life. In mathematics, we cannot afford to be dishonest. We will not clear the exam. What is it that we do when faced with questions in life without even understanding the problem? We write? Hands proved. Hands proved. Now, if you do that, life will reward you with a big zero. Hmm? Never be in a hurry to draw a conclusion. Never be in a hurry to settle a matter. Let things remain open. Have the courage and the patience to live with uncertainty. Somebody will ask you, so what have you thought about it? Just say, I'm still thinking. Hmm? When you are still thinking, then you have the scope to experiment. And still thinking does not mean you are sleeping over the matter. It means you are actively testing. And you must take risks to test. Testing won't happen on its own. You'll have to ask uncomfortable questions. You'll have to get into unprecedented situations. That's what testing is about, no? And testing always involves a degree of risk and requires, therefore, courage. You'll have to display that courage. As a young person, your biggest enemy is false belief, shallow conclusions, baseless confidence. Avoid that. Bravery does not lie in knowing everything in advance and being full and sure. The mark of courage is the willingness to live with uncertainty. I do not know what would happen tomorrow and I am okay with it. Hmm? Is everything settled for me? Not at all. Do I know in advance about my future? Not at all. Is everything sorted in life? Well, no. How do you still appear so cool? Oh, I am cool. I am cool. I am cool. Hmm? It's all very uncertain and does, does not baffle me up. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. There is no great worth in artificially freezing on a future. Everything is settled. Next five years, this is the program for me. That sounds comfortable, offers a shallow kind of security, but does not really help. Far better it is to acknowledge the inherent uncertainty in life hmm, and keep knowing things as they are. And things just won't reveal their true nature on their own. You will have to ask questions. The thing about life is, it is responsive. If you really ask good and honest questions, more often than not, you will get answers. So you got up and asked a question. So you got an answer. How about the several others who never got up? They won't get their answers. They won't get their answers. And bravery lies in getting up even if the last answer hurt you, as it did. Right? Now this is great. You did not like the answer life gave you last time. And you still get up and ask another question. Wonderful. You got hurt the last time, but that hurt is far better than remaining seated and hidden and not even getting up to raise a query. I ask all of you, what is better? To get hurt or never enter the field to play? It's better to get hurt, right? So get up and learn to play. Chances are, 99% chances, you will get hurt. That hurt is an auspicious thing. Bleed a little. Get a few bones broken internally. We don't want to get into a brawl and really get these <laughs> bones broken. huh? But enter the arena, jump into the pool, walk into the ring, throw in your hat, 
and say i am i am i exist i want to participate i am available to participate don't run away don't hide your face you are young i know very little about this lady but this thing i find very commendable the last question she asked she expected some sensitivity or even sympathy from me my answer was brutal she indeed did get hurt right and she still gather herself up and gets up and ask the next one and there was no certainty here i am the one who commands the mic i have the position of authority and i can say anything very insensitive very abrasive to her she knows that and still she has chosen to get up and ask that's how life must be for a young person run risks invite trouble not for all the flimsy reasons for the right reasons huh getting it getting it yes sir all right i'm glad thank you sir good afternoon sir myself nikhil so my question is on anger uh, for example when i am talking with my friend he comments on me in that situation how can i control my anger what kind of friends have you gathered <laughs> huh? in this campus friends seem to be a big problem huh? more than half the questions are about unworthy friends the thing is every person seems to uh, think that uh, the friends are not good and if friends are not good for every single person who is good then a says b is not a good friend to me and b says a is not a good friend to me then is there anybody good at all <laughs> your friends are a reflection of who you are no are they not yes are your friends not a reflection of who you are somebody put it in a in a bit of a crude way but i think it is quite suggestive that your personality or your salary or something is an average of your four closest friends or something like that there's something like that right if we look into your friend circle and spot the four friends closest to you your personality and also your salary and a few other things are an average of the same variables of those four people your friends actually reflect who you are by looking at your friend circle it can be predicted with some precision as to how you are having friends is not a casual matter having friends is not a casual thing <laughs> it is important to have good friends it is even more important not to have bad friends you get what i'm saying so what is more important not to have bad friends and after that if you get some good friends life thank you so much but even if you do not have good friends prefer to stay alone but never choose to be in the wrong company just because you are troubled by loneliness you say i have nobody to talk to nobody to hang around with so you will pick up the next dude lives next to you and say hey come on let's chat and let's go to the cafeteria 
Is that dude worth it? Learn to stay with yourself. Being alone has a joy peculiar to itself. Hmm? And then if life is favorable, if grace shines and you do get somebody worth being with, thank existence but never be desperate.